you want to we'll probably have more pop in whenever you want to jump in yeah i'll go ahead and do my intro that probably everybody on this call has already seen but uh just in case i'll i'll run through it um each time we do one of these i just want to make sure that everybody's familiar with our company because we do have a handful of people that are um you know really kind of getting to know us for the first time as we've been doing more of these webinars so uh, we, we are the HL Flake security hardware company, which also includes International Key Supply, McDonald Dash, and H.E. Mitchell. Um, and again, my name is Travis Howell. I'm the marketing manager for these companies. Um, and so as a combined business, we have five locations, Houston, Texas, Farmingdale, New York, Memphis, Tennessee, Jacksonville, Florida, and Portland, Oregon. Um, with Houston being you know, really the headquarters, the main uh, office, and having the largest inventory, which is about 40,000 different SKUs actually in stock on the shelf. Um, and then Farmingdale, New York is International Key Supplies headquarters, and they're primarily an automotive distributor, but we are uh, beginning the process of adding um, more of the commercial and residential hardware to, uh, to that facility. So they actually just recently made all of the products that we sell available on their website. Um, so, and then also we just recently added H.E. Mitchell to H.L. Flake's accounting system. And so they're now, uh, their sales reps now have visibility to all of the products in, in every location. Um, and again, as a combined company, we all have the same freight policy of $100 order minimum for free ground freight. And anything below that is a flat rate of 995. So, and then I just want to be sure that you are all aware of uh, Brenton Webb and Jamie Frederick, who are they are our access control support team. Um, you can reach out to either one of these guys with any questions that you have uh, about access control, whether it's hardware or software, um, and even you know to the point of if you want somebody to bounce ideas off of for setting up a solution that a customer has brought to you. Uh, feel free to, to work with these guys and, and they're here to help. So, and the, uh, the webinars that we've been doing, all of them that are free, uh, which really is a majority of the online training has been free, we're posting it on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, we're a few days up to a week behind. So the ones from last week should be on there and the ones from this week will be on our YouTube uh, by next week. So, and last thing I want to mention is um, we have a, a drawing that we're going to hold at the end of this session for a, um, a networks demo kit. So it in includes um, the gateway and it also includes the lock. And so if you were, you know, to buy this outright, it's about a thousand dollar value. Um, so we are uh, offering this at the, uh, both this morning and the afternoon session. So stay on. Only win once. Only win so once, you, right. If you come back, you only win once. So. Right. Don't, you don't need both of them. So um, <laughs> hold on until the end and we'll do the drawing uh, right at the very end of the session. So now I will hand it over to Andy. Thank you. All right, thank you, Travis. Um, today, everybody, what we're going to do is we're going to finish up our uh, series uh, on DL Windows. Uh, the last couple of days, we've actually worked with uh, the DL Windows as far as uh, creating the accounts, uh, adding the users, adding the lock profiles, creating uh, schedules. We looked at some of the features of the locks uh, yesterday. Uh, the Group 2 toggles is a nice uh, feature. Just got to make sure that the model of lock that you have or that you are wanting to sell to your customer has all the features that they are, uh, they're wanting. And today we're going to finish up with the networks. So everything that we've done over the past couple of days has, um, it, it will be the same for the networks. Okay. Um, so it will be, uh, creating the lock profiles, the accounts and everything is going to be the same. Now, if you have a customer that is already, uh, already has T3 locks, um, 
then you don't have to create a new account if they're going to go into the networks. You can actually uh, mix and match inside a single account uh, your networks and the uh, T3 uh, locks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen um, and then you will be able to see what I'm going to show you. First off, I want to uh, I want to do is kind of go over some of the items that we have as far as what the, the uh, specific to the networks. Um, on the screen, you'll see uh, the gateway. Now, this is going to look different from the one that's in the demo kit that we're going to be giving away. The demo kit has the first generation uh, gateway. Uh, it still works, still does exactly the same thing. Uh, it's just we don't use the uh, we don't have the Gen 1, which we call the Gen 1 gateway uh, anymore. Uh, we don't sell those. We sell strictly the, the Gen 2s. And we have a third one coming. I just don't know when it's going to be. But the Generation 2 has a nice uh, sleek look to it. Uh, it'll disappear on the walls. We do recommend that these gateways are mounted uh, on the wall um, six inches below the ceiling. Uh, six to eight inches or so below the ceiling height. Um, we have uh, the IME gateway, which is the um, requires an Ethernet cable and uh, uh, outside power. So it comes with a transformer and about eight feet of cable. Um, you just power it up using the transformer, plug in your Ethernet cable, and uh, you're pretty much off and running. I'll show you a little bit more of that. We also have a PoE gateway, uh, which is a power over Ethernet. It does not require outside power. It gets its power from the network. So if you're going to use those, you need to make sure that your customer has uh, PoE-capable uh, network switches. Okay? Then we have a Wi-Fi gateway. Uh, the Wi-Fi gateway will have a little black antenna uh, up here on the um, uh, sticking out of the box, um, and it is not a plug-and-play. Okay, as far as the Wi-Fi, uh, you have to discover and add the gateway into the account hardwired first, uh, and then uh, you set your uh, Wi-Fi parameters, your uh, network name, the password, and some of the other protocols uh, for the network. Uh, then you, uh, once those are set in the gateway, you can unplug the Ethernet cable and go hang the gateway, the Wi-Fi gateway, wherever you need to and it will pop up on, on the network um, and into the software and it'll be up and running. Now, for those of you that have customers that say, nope, you're not you're putting anything on our network, uh, you will have those people that say, no, we, we, you know, we don't want that, it's too easily to be hacked, and so on and so forth. Well, number one, if they're hacking your network, their network, uh, if somebody's hacking their network, they're doing it, uh, even now, they're going to do it before uh, the add the gateways, and the gateways are not going to add uh, vulnerabilities, even the Wi-Fi gateway, because we're using their security protocols, um, and the communication between the gateway and the lock is not Wi-Fi. It's a 900 megahertz radio frequency, which has a 128-bit AES encryption. Okay, so it's encrypt it's an encrypted signal between the gateway and the lock on that radio. Uh, and um, we haven't had anybody hack it yet. Uh, I won't say that it's not hackable, but we haven't had anybody hack it yet, okay? Now, we also have a USB gateway, so if you still have that customer that says, no, 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 not putting anything on our network, you can still use the network's locks. Um, we have um, various network's locks. We have the Architect series, and we have the Trilogy series. Um, you know, and all of these you can use with the, uh, excuse me, you can use with the USB gateway. Well, what the USB gateway will allow you to do is if you are maintaining the system for your customer, <clears throat> which I have some locksmiths out there that do, um, you can actually pull up in front of the building. If there's a lock on the door, on the front door, and you can see it, you can probably communicate with it. So you can use it as um, your programming device. Um, if you okay, Travis says if you joined after the intro, we'll be holding a drawing for the network's demo kit at the end of the session. Okay, so uh, the USB gateway uh, can be used uh, maybe in a small mom and pop shop that maybe have a couple of locks. 
your communication distance on the USB gateway is going to be about a hundred or so feet inside standard building construction. You know, that's uh, sheetrock, um, you know, drywall studs, things like that. Um, the regular gateways, the hardwired gateways and the Wi-Fi gateways are going to have about 125 to 150 foot uh, radius that you can communicate with the locks. Uh, we do have expanders available work that work with the generation two gateways and these expanders will add uh, another one up to about 150 or so feet of communication distance. Uh, so you can have up to seven expanders per gateway. Okay. We're going to be talking about the expanders in a little, a uh, little bit more detail. Um, so let me get my slide here. So here's a picture of the board uh, of the Gen, uh, Gen 2 gateway. You can see that we have the Ethernet input here. We have a terminal block for the power if it requires it. Uh, we have a reset button down here right above these two little dials. And these dials, what they are is they're a gateway expander group setting, okay? So you set the gateway expander group setting prior to powering up the gateway, right? Uh, once you've powered it up and uh, it's discovered and online, you cannot change that. All of the gateways will come in with a setting of zero, zero. So you just turn the dials, uh, set the, uh, the grouping, even if you're not going to use expanders right now go ahead and set each gateway to its own group. Uh, that way, if you do expand, uh, use expanders later, you don't have to default anything uh, to uh, add the expanders. Now, the newer Gen 2 gateways have a little input here. Uh, you see the two little pigtail, white pigtail wires here. That input is uh, used for uh, you can put a you know a little mushroom button or a doorbell button or anything that's going to close that circuit for uh, at least one second, and uh, you'll be able to use that for lockdown capability. And I'll show you that. Uh, we'll talk more about lockdown in a minute. So the expander, you notice it does not have the uh, Ethernet input, so we don't need that. It doesn't require it. It does have the terminal block for the power. Still has the reset button and it has the uh, dials here. Now you notice the little stickers here with the month and the year. Okay, that is the warranty sticker, all right? So you can see this, uh, this unit, the expander, the warranty expired in November of 2017. Uh, the warranty expires uh, on the, this gateway here in October of 2021. So uh, we have a two-year warranty on all of our products. Um, and that uh, shows your expiration date. Now, if you get a product, um, HO Flake has a real good reputation of not holding, you know, the product, but maybe one gets slid to the back and it doesn't get rotated out. Uh, that has happened. Um, but, you know, if you get one that has either has expired when you look at the date or it is close to it, uh, just hang on to your, uh, your invoice. Uh, uh, from where you bought it uh, from HL Flake and uh, when you sold it to your customer and we'll monitor and we'll monitor. We'll, we will honor that warranty for two years uh, from the date that you uh, purchased and installed it for your customer. Okay. So uh, don't get, don't get too antsy about, uh, you know, the two years uh, we will honor that if um, for two years, if it has expired or is close to it. Okay. Now, a little bit closer look at these dials. Uh, you can see that it has a little arrow that will uh, point to the number. So you set each gateway to its own uh, group setting. And then the expanders that are going to go with that gateway, you set them to the same group setting. Okay? Uh, and that way, uh, the expanders uh, and the gateway that are on the, that one group, they will only communicate with the devices on that group. So set those before you power it up and discover it. Right, for both the expanders and the gateways. Now, um, I'm going to show you a few pictures here of some of the devices that we have. Now, this is a net panel. Uh, it is for electrified hardware, uh, like an electric strike, a mag lock, uh, a, a, a panic bar with electrified retraction, um, or you know anything like that, electrified lever set. So if your customer has this hardware existing in their building, 
you don't have to rip all of that out just to put in, you know, a, a cylindrical uh, trilogy or, you know, an architect or whatever. You can use what they have existing. We can use the existing hardware and reader uh, if you want to use it, or you can use uh, our reader, which you see the two readers there, one with keypad only and one with keypad and procs. The Architect series is a little bit different, uh, has a different look. Uh, the features and everything are pretty much the same as the Trilogy side, but it doesn't have that um, commercialized uh, keypad look to it. And these are interior use. Uh, they're not weatherized, so you want to keep those on the interior doors, like office doors, uh, you know, hallway doors, things like that. And at this time, they are card access only. Um, you can see the reader at the top with the little green light on it. Um, that is uh, card access only. We're working uh, on a keypad and prox combo. Uh, so you, uh, we will have a keypad available for these, uh, hopefully um, not too far down the road. Of course, we have our exit trim, uh, the trilogy side. Uh, all of those are weatherized uh, on the trilogy side. So you're cylindrical mortise, your exit trim, um, all of those are going to be weatherized. And if you notice right above the head of the panic bar here, you see this big black box. Now this uh, holds the radio. Uh, it's got the antenna. It's got the plug-ins for your uh, wired remote release. If you want to use a wired remote release, uh, the relay that we talked about yesterday, they have the relay in them as well, has the, the plug-in for those. It also houses the battery pack, okay? So this is uh, for the cylindrical, the mortise, and the exit trim. We use four C-cell batteries, not the double A's. So we get about a five-year battery life with these locks, okay? Now we do have, uh, mentioned it yesterday, we do have the narrow style uh, that's in the networks family now. Uh, we have the prox and keypad or keypad only. Um, and you notice that it has the black cap at the top. This is the radio antenna. So you can use it with, um, you know, the Adams Wright dead latch. Uh, you can use it with uh, an exit bar. We do have a version that works with the exit trim or with the exit bar and use the exit trim. So uh, we do have both of those models available. This is the cylindrical architect. So you can see it just looks like a regular cylindrical lock with a uh, reader on top. Uh, the battery box is in the back. Uh, so you have that mounted on the back of the, uh, the door on the inside, the secured side. Uh, the N90L uh, specifically has a red uh, LED light uh, on the box. So when the system goes into a lockdown, you, that strobe will flash and it, it, it uh, lets the uh, occupants inside the room know that we are in a lockdown. Okay. Now, very important here when you're putting in a network system, you need to keep the cards that come with the gateways, expanders, and locks. Because you'll notice that it has a place for uh, the installer to write where they installed that device. Because when we go uh, discover these devices on this, in the software, all you will see is uh, the gateway model and the MAC address. It doesn't know where that device is located. So you need to keep uh, up with these cards. You see in the uh, uh, red oval there, keep the card in a safe place. Uh, you can either keep the cards, uh, put them in a file. You can take pictures of them, put them on your computer. Doesn't matter. You just need to hang on to these cards. So the locks have an ID card as well. Like I said, it shows the lock model and the serial number. And those, again, those are the two uh, items that you will see when you discover these locks into uh, the software. Okay. Oh, I got a couple more slides here. Um, now. Because these are uh, have a, uh, using radio and they're, they're not wired to each other, we do have a network signal generator and a network signal meter. These are your site survey tools. Okay, So you use these, uh, you take the generator, it looks like the Gen 1 gateway, you hang it up uh, on the nylon, um, you know, where you think the gateway is going to go, then you can take your meter and go door to door to check your signal strength. 
we would like to have um, a signal strength of 30 plus, um, you know, on our scale. Uh, below 30, you're looking at a, you know, possible drop in signal, uh, especially if there's something in, you know, that pops up in between, like uh, our our bodies. We absorb uh, radio. Uh, we distort that radio signal. Uh, our bodies do. So if somebody's walking down the hallway or a whole bunch of people are walking down the hallway, they could interfere with that communication if you're on the bottom end of the scale in that 20 to 30 range. So you know, optimal, you're looking at 40 plus, um, and those expanders will help get you into that uh, range. Now, I said that we have lockdown capabilities. So we have emergency commands. Okay? We have uh, three emergency commands. And we can do these commands from the software. We can do them from any lock that has a keypad. We can do it from a four button remote uh, key fob. And we can do it from the gate, uh, the Gen 2 gateway with the input. Um, well, um, from the software, I'll show you that. You'll see the, uh, I think I showed you yesterday, the icon at the top that has the little red uh, light on it. Uh, I showed you that, but from the keypad, if you are, are an authorized emergency user, that's the master code, the managers, and anybody that you designate uh, from the basic user list, you can designate them as an emergency user. Now, what they can do is they can go to any lock that they have access to. <clears throat> so <clears throat> they have to be able to open that door, uh, not just any lock, but they have to be able to open that door. They enter their credential whether it's a card, a code, or card and code, and then hit 911 on the keypad, and that will send a signal back <clears throat> to the gateway, and then the gateway will disperse that signal to the other gateways and all the locks, and you will go into a lockdown. Now, we do have an emergency passage as well, so we can open all the doors for ingress, or if you have a double-sided uh, 6300 series lock that has a keypad on both sides, you can put those locks into a passage mode uh, to allow egress uh, as well as the ingress on that lock. And that's with your credential and then zero, zero, zero. Now the third command that we have is the return everything back to normal. And that is your credential and then one, two, three. So again, any lock that you uh, or your emergency users have access to uh, they have to be able to unlock that door, you know, at that particular time. They can pre uh, present their credential and then use these uh, keypad sequences and either go into lockdown passage or return to normal. Now, from the four button remote fob, I showed you the fob yesterday. So if I hold down the number three and four at the same time and I'm within range of one of four locks that's paired to that, uh, to that remote, then I can put the system into lockdown. Okay? I hold number three and four down um, at the same time, uh, about three or four seconds, and it will uh, do the same thing as the keypad. It sends that command to the gateway, and then it uh, locks everything down. Now, with these off, well, I'm gonna say off software um, lockdown capabilities from the keypad, from the fob, or from the gateway, you don't have to have the software up and running. Okay, so you can have the software shut down, um, you know, and it's still going to operate uh, just like it would if the software was up. We don't need the software to issue these commands unless you're doing it through the software. Now, to return to normal, I just hold down the numbers one and two, and it'll return everything back to normal state. I cannot do the passage mode from the uh, four button fob, but I can lock it down and return to normal. Now, as far as the gateway input, we've got the plug with the pigtails. You wire that down to uh, any momentary button. You hold that down for at least one second. And with the correct firmware, uh, which you have to update the firmware in the gateway, but with the correct firmware, uh, you can send the system into lockdown. It is locked down only at this time. So if you're, um, say you do, you're putting the system in for a school, and they're wanting to use uh, the gunshot detectors uh, that are out there now. You know, these uh, devices, they hear a gunshot, they close a circuit, and then, uh, you know, they can send a lockdown or make a phone call or whatever. 
um, you can use that for this, or you can have this, these two wires going down to a big, um, you know, like a mushroom button or something in an office sitting next to the uh, receptionist and, and in the, um, in the school's office and they just push the button and hold it down for a second and it will um, send it into lockdown. So I got a question: Does uh, all uh, does it do all the gateways within the soft uh, without the software running? Yes, it does. Um, so if I've got uh, you know ten gateways and the software is down, if I do a keypad uh, or a key fob or through the gateway to do the lockdown, it sends it to everything. It sends it to every uh, other gateway, sends it to all the gateways, and then the gateways send it to all the locks. So uh, it's a total up to 2,000 lock uh, and 50 gateway um, system. It'll do everything. Okay. So, um, and just as a last little note here before we jump into the software, we do have upgrade kits. Uh, these upgrade kits will allow you to take an existing uh, T3 mortise or cylindrical lock and make it into a networks lock. The kit includes a, a new outside housing and a new inside housing because uh, the brain is different. Uh, and then the, you have to have the bigger um, box for the uh, batteries and the radio. So you have new inside, new outside. You keep your existing chassis, whether it's a cylindrical or mortise uh, lock body. And it'll save you, uh, your customer, uh, 415 to $560 off the list price. So that's going to pay for your first uh, gateway. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that I haven't looked at their stock, but I'm pretty sure that HL Flake has these uh, available for you. Okay. So we're not done yet. So we will close this and then we'll open up the software. Okay. So. Uh, like I said, over the past couple of days, you know, we've created the account. We've done all of this. I have two uh, networks locks uh, that I've added into the account. And you can tell a networks locks with the little radio icon, okay? Uh, that, uh, that will, the radio waves, that will uh, indicate that it is a networks lock. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to go out. Once you have your system built, you go out and you discover your gateways. So um, you have to just uh, go to your gateway config. Now, if you're doing all networks locks and if you have not set your security password, like I told you on Monday that you need to do, then when you go to click on your gateway config icon here, if that security password is not set, it'll pop up a little error message or a little message that say you haven't set it, you need to set it, and then you can go in and configure your gateways. So ours is set, so we're gonna click on Gateway Config, which opens up our Gateways uh, screen here. So we have some tabs, so let's look at the different tabs. We have Gateways, and we have several options we can do here. We can discover gateways, we can add uh, a, gateway, a single gateway to an account, we can remove a gateway from an account, we can replace a gateway with a new one. So if you have a gateway that um, you know, goes bad, maybe it gets struck by lightning or some, something happens to it and you need to replace it, you don't have to default everything, um, the, all the locks that are on it. You just click on the uh, highlight the gateway that you want to replace and then click on replace gateways with a new one. It'll go out and find the new gateway and it will actually take what we call a, a lock table with all of the information for all the locks and move it over to the new gateway. Real seamless, not a hard thing to do. Uh, I will try to show you how to do that. I don't, I've only got one gateway up and running, uh, so I can't really replace one. But uh, other things here, uh, the one thing that you're gonna have to do once you have the gateways discovered is configure your network settings. Okay? Even for a standard, uh, uh, what we call an IME gateway that is not Wi-Fi, you still need to set a static IP address, okay? So hopefully uh, you've told your customer, you know, look, we're going to have, uh, you know, say six gateways in your building. I need six static IP addresses. Tell them that up front. I need six static IP addresses, one for each gateway, okay? So however many gateways you have, 
you need one static IP and they can set that for you. Then you need to go in and make sure that it's set static uh, inside the, the software and I'll show you how to do that. A couple of things that, uh, that you can also do is you can manually add a gateway. So if you know what the IP address is going to be and what the MAC address is, which is the serial number, uh, you can add it manually. Now, if you're going to um, be working with a network that has multiple subnets or VLANs and your software is on one subnet and your gateways are going to be on another, then you're going to want to do this, uh, add the gateways manually. You cannot discover the gateways across subnets. Okay. If you're not familiar with subnets, um, I, I, you know, I'll try to explain it. Um, but what it is, is with a subnet, that's this third set of numbers here. So you've, in, a, in an IP address, you have four sets of numbers. You have one here, one here, one here, and one here. They're called octets. So the third octet will be your, uh, is one of the uh, uh, ways that you can tell if it's a subnet. So it may be, you know, 196.168.0.1 as an IP address. That's one uh, subnet. And then if it's uh, 196.168.1.1, that's a different subnet. So this number would be a different subnet, okay? Uh, any of the first three sets of numbers can be a different uh, subnet, but generally it's going to be this third uh, third number here. Okay, now I'll, I'll try to show you a little bit more of that in just a minute. Um, once you have the gateway discovered, you and it's it's a you're going to use it Wi-Fi because it's a Wi-Fi gateway. Then you would change it from wired only to wireless, which will allow you to change your security type your authentication, the encryption, uh, what type of uh, key you have, whether it's a paraphrase or um, whatever. Uh, you type in your password for the network, the, the network name, and then uh, the channel number if they have a set channel number. If their channels rotate, which there are 11 different channels, so if they rotate automatically, just leave it blank and uh, it will automatically rotate to whatever channel that the network is working on, okay? Now, one thing about the Wi-Fi. There are two types of Wi-Fi systems out there. Uh, there's a 2.4 gigahertz and there is a 5 gigahertz. Uh, those are the different frequencies. We do not work off of a 5 gigahertz network, okay? Most networks out there will have both capable because a lot of your devices, your cameras and things like that, that are IP, they don't work on the five gig. They're going to work on the 2.4. So the systems are still out there. So just make sure that you let them know that we operate on a 2.4 gigahertz or yeah, 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Okay. So, um, you set all of the parameters up, you save or send the information to the gateway, depending on if you're, uh, discovering it, or if you're just putting it in manually, click save, and it will save the information. And when you plug that gateway in, as far as the manual uh, manual uh, ad, then that gateway will pop right up on the screen. Okay, so you have to know what the IP address is going to be, uh, what the subnet mask, and all of this information is, um, and then you just set it up. Usually, you're going to have their IT department in there with you. Uh, because they're not going to give you some of this information, okay? They're definitely not going to give you their password for their Wi-Fi if it's an internal uh, thing, okay? So make sure you have them with you. Now, uh, under the locks, once we have a gateway discovered and, and connected, then we can discover locks, we can link and unlink locks, we can delete serial numbers, we can add locks manually, we can do all of this, okay? And then under the expanders tab, this is where you discover your expanders uh, and do everything, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can add gateways. Now, if you only have one or two gateways, then it may be easier to go under gateways and then click on discover new gateways. And what it'll do is it'll go across the network and it'll, it will find all factory defaulted gateways that are powered up and online. Okay, 
So I've got two gateways. I have a regular gateway that has an IP address that's on my network. And then I have my little USB gateway. It does not have an IP address because it's not on the network. Okay. It does not have a Mac address again, because it's not on the network. All right. So once you have, um, these, then you have to go in and you have to highlight the gateway and then you have to go back under gateways and click on add gateway to account. Now what it will do is it will change this IP address color from green to blue. So it's available right now. If I were to close out uh, the, uh, the um, uh, gateway config and open it back up, my gateways are gone. Okay. I, I found them. It's like uh, hide and seek. I found them. I just didn't touch them. Okay. And tag them. So uh, I know they're out there. So if I uh, do it again, it will refind those two gateways, but it had, it has not added them to the account. So once they're, uh, they're here, I highlight it, go on back under gateways and click on add and then click yes. And what it'll do is it will change the IP address color from green to blue. Now you'll notice uh, when you're doing this or you, there's a light sequence on these devices. So I'm um, just going to go back here real quick. On the front of these gateways, you have the three lights, a yellow, red, and green. When it's factory defaulted, your lights will be uh, solid yellow and a rapid flash of green. The red will not be on. Red is usually your transmission. It means that it's, it's communicating. So a rapid flash of the green means that it's factory defaulted. So go ahead and default it out of the box. You just hold down that, rubber, that uh, reset button uh, for about 10 or so seconds and it will reset the gateway. Now, once it's been added into the account, this green light will go from a rapid flash to what we call a heartbeat, about one beat, one flash per second. So that means that it is online and it's ready to go to work. Okay. So I'm going to open it back up here so you can see that I have my gateway online. Okay. Now, the other way that you can discover gateways, now again, you have to be on the same subnet to do it this way either under Discover Gateways or Discover Gateways and Auto Add. So if I click on Discover Gateways and Auto Add, this is going to automatically add any unassigned gateways to the system. Would you like to continue? Click Yes. It's looking for any available gateway. Uh, and it will, once it's find it, once it finds it, it will add it to the account. Okay. So there's my other gateway, my USB gateway and it's not green, it's blue. So it's up and running, it's ready to go, All right? So there's no configuration needed with the USB gateway because it's not on the network. So we do need to configure the, um, the other gateway. So we go back under gateways, configure edit network settings. And this is a wired only gateway, so I'm gonna leave it alone. The box that says use DHCP, we need to uncheck that box. If it's, or if it's checked, if it's not checked, leave it alone. But, it, but by unchecking it, you've chosen to give it a static IP address. Uh, this could cause the gateway to be unreachable until it's installed on the proper network. This is what you would do is if, you know, if you're going to discover them the easy way, then you would have, and they're going to be on different subnets. You would discover it locally on the same subnet. Once you have this, the correct IP address for wherever you're going to put it, okay, once you have that in here, then you click send and it will be unreachable, which means that the uh, IP address, instead of being blue, it'll be red until you take it and, hook, and uh, connect it to the correct subnet. Okay. So you go in here and you change anything that you need to change. Uh, for the remote configuration, what this is, is um, this is going to require internet access. So what this will allow you to do is take the software, say on my laptop, I walk away from my, uh, ho my home network that I have it connected to and all of my gateways connected to. If I have the, the WAN address, which is the wide area network address, which is the address that 
uh, your service provider provides to that router. Okay. So, um, you know, it may be, you know, 69 dot, <clears throat> excuse me, 69.50.2.1, uh, you know, whatever the numbers are. Okay. Um, uh, mine are going to be, you know, 10.0, where'd my zero go? 10.0.0.1 is my, uh, my local address, which is the LAN local area network. The wide area network address is going to be completely different from this. But you put in that information, uh, you have to set up port forwarding in the network, and you have to set the port at 10,001 or higher for each uh, gateway. has to be a different port for each gateway. Okay? Again, you're probably going to need, if you're going to do this, you're going to need help from the IT department. Okay? But what this means is, now that I'm off-site, I have the software off-site, I can connect to the internet. And then I can actually remote, you know, you know, get into those gateways from off-site, and I can control the system. I can program it. I can do whatever I need to. Okay. So again, uh, once you have all your parameters set, if it's going to be wireless only, change it to wireless. Set all your parameters. Then click send. Okay. Don't click save. Save will just save it in the software, and then it may not be uh, available. You won't be able to see it. Uh, possibly, but send the information. If you make any changes that way, it sends it to the gateway and it has it saved in the, uh, in the uh, gateway itself, as well as in the software. Okay. So that's really all you have to do. Uh, you know, you can change the, the name of the gateway, which I would recommend just click it a couple of times and we'll say uh, first floor uh, Northwest hall or whatever. So now you know where that gateway is located. So if anything happens to it, you can go straight to it, figure out what's wrong. So if it's unreachable, if it goes red, and I'm just going to unplug my USB gateway here for a second so you can see what will happen. So it's unreachable. The software can't communicate with it. So you need to go out and find out why. Uh, if it's a standard gateway, what happened? Did somebody unplug it? Uh, either from power or from the ethernet, you know, did they unplug it at the switch? Did the uh, janitor unplug the transformer and use that outlet so they could uh, vacuum the floor or, you know, what happened? So you're going to have to figure out what is going on and what happened. Okay. But once you have all of that set, you've got your gateways in. Now you can go out and discover your locks. And I'm going to give you a little piece of advice here uh, just because I see this, uh, because I do trainings for uh, end users. So if you have, if you sell a system and you want, uh, or they want me to come in, you can sell them uh, my service. I can come in, sit down with them, train them on how to use the software, number one, and then how to set up a system and all of that. I can do that. Uh, it varies in price depending on how long I'm there. Uh, typically it's, uh, it's, a, it's from a thousand to $1,500 a day to bring me in. So, uh, you can make that money. You now know how to set up a system. Uh, well, almost, I haven't finished yet, but, um, you can make that money or you can have me come in, uh, and that might actually help sell the system. Say, Hey, I can get the trainer in here for this company and they will train you and help you set it up. Now I'm not going to sit there and help them install, help you install the locks. Um, but uh, what, what you can do is go ahead and give them the software ahead. Okay. Uh, tell them where to get the software. Or you give it to them, whatever. Um, let them install the software. Let them get, you know, running with it. And I can come in and train them before you get the locks online. Okay. Uh, their IT department can hang the gateways and have them sitting there. They can be sitting up uh, on the network, just idle, waiting. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. So it helps if they already have the software up, they have it installed, they have the gateways installed. And then when you come in and install the locks, they're ready for you. You install a lock, you text them with the information or call them or whatever, give them the card, tell them where the lock is. They discover it, they program it, the lock is online and ready to go. It's not sitting there for weeks waiting for somebody to come in and train them, okay? 
So that helps make uh, things go a little bit easier, a little bit faster. Uh, you know, uh, the old saying, happy, happy wife, happy life. Well, it's the same thing, happy customer, happy life. You know, so uh, they'll be happy with the system. Okay. So now we have the gateways online. So we need to go out and discover the locks. Well, I only have one lock here that I'm going to discover, and I'm going to use the USB gateway for it right now, just to kind of give you a couple of uh, added little things that we can do. So I'm going to use my USB gateway. So I highlight that gateway and I come over to discover my locks. Now we can have up to 63 locks assigned per gateway, except for the USB gateway. I can have an unlimited number assigned to that. There's no limit on that. But the standard gateways, I can have up to 63 locks. So I'm just going to choose one. So I'm going to click on, uh, you know, pick the number one and then click on discover locks. Now it's going to go out. It's going to look for any factory defaulted lock. When you put the lock on the door, you default it. Okay, um, either pull the batteries, hold down the you know the button, plug in the batteries, hold down the AL while it's beeping, and so forth. Uh, or you can put in uh, and use function 99. Either one that'll default the lock. So once it has discovered all of your locks, and you can see this is why you need those yellow ID cards. Okay, you need the card because you have the serial number and then the lock type, okay? That's all you see. So you don't know where this lock is supposed to go or where it is, but you're gonna check the box for the uh, serial numbers that you wanna add and then click on assign. Now you notice it says assigning locks below sig uh, signals with below 25 is not recommended. So that's these two numbers here. You don't want those below 25. Click on assign and it will assign that lock to that gateway, meaning that that lock will not receive any information from any other gateway. We do not use mesh networking, okay? We only use, uh, you know, that gateway is assigned to that, or that lock is assigned to that gateway, and that's all that it will talk to, other than the expanders if you're using those. Once it's configured, it asks you, would you like to link the assigned lock to, the lock, to uh, a lock profile now? So yes, you have to tell the software what information is going to that serial number, okay? So you click on yes, and you see here we have two lock profiles and we have one lock. Now, yesterday or uh, Monday when we were creating these lock profiles, I told you that it was very, very important that you make sure that you use the correct lock type, whether it's a different you know, uh, if it's a PDL lock like I have on the table, uh, then you have to make sure it's a PDL, not a DL, not a PL. Okay, you have to use the same model number, okay? So this this uh, first floor guest uh, restroom is a PDL N 4500. The rear gate is a PDL 6300. So if I click on the rear gate, my serial number disappears. That's because you cannot link a uh, lock type to a different uh, profile lock type, okay? If I click on the, the PDLN 4500, which is this one here, my serial number comes back, okay? So the software is smarter than I am. It knows that I cannot pair or link different lock types, okay? So click on the profile, look at your card, uh, then click on the serial number, and now the two are linked together. And it says that here on the uh, uh, profile, it says that it's linked. Whereas this, the rear gate is not linked, okay? So you can close from here. If you link it to, uh, before we close, if you link it to the wrong profile, just click highlight it, click unlink, and it will separate the two. Then you can connect it to the correct one, okay? Now you notice that I have one lock assigned to the USB gateway zero to the uh, first floor Northwest hall, okay? So what I can do now is I can go in and I can uh, highlight the gateway, or I'm sorry, highlight the profile, go under communication, send the, uh, communicate with selected networks lock, and I can send and receive everything. Now I've got my cards here, they don't work. Okay, it's not programmed. So I have to push the information out. Nothing in our software is automatic. 
unlike some of the uh, hardwired systems out there where you have, uh, you know, uh, the automatic download, uh, we don't do automatic downloads of information. So you have to send it. So you have to go under communication, communicate with selected network slot, select what you want to send, and hit start. And then it will start programming the lock with the information that you have assigned to that profile. Now, what I did this morning before we uh, came on is since this is a guest restroom, we created schedules yesterday. I created a couple of schedules that might come in handy for you. Okay, so let's look at these schedules. So I have a couple of. Um, pin codes that I added. I have an April guest pin and a May guest pin. So this pin number is assigned, it shouldn't be assigned to that one, is assigned to the first floor uh, guest restroom. So if somebody needs to go to the restroom when they're in, you know, visiting the facility, the receptionist or somebody can give them that pin number, 41308. Okay. And that pin number is good for the month of April. And what I've done is I set up a schedule that said for the month of April, all days of the month, all days of the week, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., this user, number 23, because that's the user number for that April guest pin in the locked data screen that we did yesterday, that pin number is good from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just for the month of April. Now, tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m., that uh, credential, that PIN number will be disabled permanently. And then the new one for May will pick up and then be good for the entire month of May. So that's something that you may need if you have uh, homeowners associations, you know, where, you know, they need, um, you know, a PIN number for guests for the restrooms or whatever, and you want to change them month by month. You know, you have a Starbucks, you have a, you know, whatever type of um, uh, facility where they need to change that PIN number from time to time and they want it only set for a month or a week or whatever, you can do that with a schedule. So if I enter my code 41308, it works. Okay. Now, my other one, which is 58083. It doesn't work, but if if we were to come back on Friday and do a little session, I could prove to you that that uh, that it's the the opposite. The April code won't work. The May one will. Okay, just a little tidbit there for you. So my lock is now programmed. It's usable. Okay, codes and cards can be used. Since this is a restroom, they can throw the deadbolt, and it locks the keypad. It disables the keypad, okay? And then when the person leaves, they walk out and the lock is reset, and now reusable, because it's a restroom, okay? Now, some of the things that we can do with these locks, and we'll get to the emergency lockdown in just, in just a minute. Some of the things that we can do with the networks locks that you cannot do with the regular, okay? I can right click my mouse on that profile. I can view the status of that lock. Okay, which means that I can see the description, the lock type, the serial number, what gateway it's on, what the uh, signal strengths are, what the firmware version is. Okay, this is important because the firmware uh, is upgradable. You can actually go to our website. Um, you can go to our technical website and you can download updated firmware for the locks. And when you download the updated firmware, it might give you more features, more functions, okay? Uh, if you sign up for my technical blog, uh, when we come out with new firmware, I tell you what the lock, uh, firmware mo uh, version is, what lock models it's for, and what it does, okay? What the new features are. You also see the battery status, okay? Uh, you can see what the status of the lock is, whether it's locked, unlocked, in passage, uh, in emergency lockdown, in emergency passage, whatever the status of that lock is. Okay. Now, we can also, you notice that that door was locked. We can also 
put the lock into passage mode from the software. Here's another way that you can uh, open the doors, put them in passage mode without setting a schedule. You don't have to set a schedule. You don't have to have group two, uh, toggles passage, anything like that. You can do it. Uh, whoops, I've hit the wrong one. Uh, you can do it from the software. Okay. I hit lock instead of unlock. Um, but um, it'll send the command to the lock. And then, uh, so put lock into passage. So it will uh, send the command to the lock. Lock is now in passage mode and the status will change from locked to uh, in passage. Okay. Now, if that door is supposed to be locked and it's unlocked, then again, you can go in and take it out of passage from the software. You don't have to go to the lock and do it. You can do it from the software. Okay. So that's one thing. Now we've added another feature uh, in this version 5.5.3 that I actually like uh, like a lot. Now under the features tab, you know, I showed you the remote. We can do a momentary remote or toggle passage. To use this uh, uh, feature that I'm going to be talking about, you have to have it as remote release momentary in here. Okay. So for remote release momentary. If you right click the, that profile, you can manually unlock that door, meaning I can use the software to buzz somebody in. I can do it for the past time. That's the amount of time that a normal credential um, would open the door for, which is you know, uh, three seconds by default. Okay, So I can also do it for any of these um, times that are preset in here. So if you need to uh, unlock that door for a meeting for an hour, you can put it for 60 minutes, okay? Uh, and then after 60 minutes, it'll lock back. It's a timed passage mode, okay? So we're gonna set it for the pass time and then send the command. And then the door will unlock, okay? And then it will lock back after three seconds. Okay, so you can actually you can uh, do the manually unlock door. This is where you update the locks firmware. Okay, so if you are going to update the firmware, you download the file, you go to your uh, downloaded folder, and then you find the version, the updated version, click open, and it will update the firmware. This firmware is already in there, so I don't need to update it. But um, We'll go back here uh, where there's some multiples. So you can see for the PDL 6100, which is one of the more popular uh, locks because it's a prox and keypad cylindrical. Over the years we have uh, that we've had this lock, we've actually updated the firmware several times. Okay, so the lock that we're going to be giving away uh, at the end of the session you will probably need to update the firmware and you're going to update that firmware because it is a PDL 6100. You want to go to our website and find version 61M. Download that uh, and then uh, update the firmware for it. That way you've got the most up-to-date features and functionality. Okay. Now, um, the emergency. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things that we can do under global. When we added our users the other day, um, none of these users have that capability. Like I said a second ago, to go to the keypad and put the system into lockdown. Only people currently that have that capability are the master code and the manager. Okay, because if I click on the emergency users uh, tab here, you see there's none here. That's your basic users that we are going to assign that capability to. Right now, the master code and the manager are the only ones that have that capability. But if I want to add that uh, capability to say me, I right click on my name and then scroll down to lockdown user and then add remove emergency user. That will give me the little red light symbol and that will allow me to initiate lockdown or passage and okay, global lockdown or global passage. 
I cannot take it out of lockdown unless I right click on my name again and I go down to lockdown user and then enable, disable, reset lockdown. That gives me another little icon. So if I have both of these icons, then I can go to um, I can go to my keypad and I can enter any of these credentials, uh, use my credential and, and enter any of these modes. With the just the little red light and not the open door with the arrow, only thing I can do is lockdown and passage. Okay. So you, you may have a customer that wants everybody that is a user to be able to put the system into lockdown, but not everybody be able to take it out. So this way you can do that. Um, the, this, came, this suggestion came from a, an end user. Uh, it was a medical complex. They wanted to be able to lock down the entire building, but they wanted anybody to be able to do it, but only certain people take it out of lockdown. And those are the ones that have the little uh, door with the arrow or the administrative users, the master code, the installers, managers, and supervisors. These, all of these uh, have the ability to do everything at the keypad. Okay. So if you look at the, uh, look at my name here, I told you that I could go to the keypad if I'm able to open the door. Well, I can't go to the first floor women's restroom or the second floor women's restroom and enter these code, these uh, commands at the keypad. I can only do it from the first floor men's, second floor men's, the first floor guests, and the rear gate. I have to be able to open that door at that given time to be able to issue those commands. Okay. All right. Now, if I'm going to do it from the do a lockdown from the software, I click on the emergency tab and then click on lockdown passage or return to normal. Okay. Now it's going to send the command to the uh, gateway, gateway to the lock. And then it's oh, no, no, oh, no locks assigned. Huh. I forgot. All right. The USB gateway does not have emergency commands capable. All right. So we go back to the config. My lock is actually on my USB gateway. Forgot about this. Okay. So I need to move that lock over to this other gateway. Uh, I can do that. I can either delete the lock, default it, and rediscover it, or I can go under locks, transfer locks to another gateway. Now this only works from a USB gateway to a regular gateway. Okay, so locks, transfer locks. I check the box, check the gateway I want to move it to, and click transfer. So what what good is this? What does this do for you? Okay, well, this does a couple of things. Number one, you as a locksmith, you can go in with your software, you can go in and you can um, set up all of the um, all of the locks, program them with the USB gateway. If your customer's taking their own sweet time about getting the software installed, getting the gateways installed, at least they can start using the locks. Now, once they get everything up and running, they get the gateways up, then what you can do is you can um, go in, add the gateways with your software, transfer the gateway, uh, the locks over to the gateways, then export the account. And then they can import the account and now they're up and running. Okay. So it's a little bit of work, but at least you can get them up and running uh, temporarily until they get their gateways online. Okay. Now let's go back to the emergency. Click lockdown, it's waiting for the status. Door just went into lockdown. Okay. Lights flashing, uh, outside light will flash red, the inside uh, light bar will flash red, and we are in emergency lockdown. Okay, so if I go uh, if I go look at the gateway status, it says it's an emergency lockdown. If I look at the gateway's lock table, this will show me all of the locks that are assigned to that gateway, and it shows that we're in emergency lockdown. 
Okay. Now, situation's over, I can go back to normal. Or if we needed to, I can set everything to an emergency passage. Okay. So doors in passage mode. It's still flashing red. Got another question here. You could pre-configure a lot of this at your shop and then take it to the business and install and transfer locks from the USB gate. You could. Um, one of the things about pre, you know, setting everything up prior to going to the uh, to the job site, uh, it's not a huge deal. But when you unplug the batteries from our locks, it doesn't reset the lock unless you accidentally or you intentionally go in and do a reset. Um, the only thing that you're going to lose is the date and time. Okay. It's not a big deal because with the networks locks, you can go in after you get everything on their system, go in and update the date and time. Okay. Because if you're using schedules, your schedules will be off. Okay. So it's not a huge deal, but yes, you could uh, set everything up prior to taking it to the, uh, to the facility. Okay. But with the USB gateway, you know, why do that? Just have your laptop there and install the lock, program it, and then you don't have to unplug the batteries uh, and all your um, schedules are going to work correctly, okay, because of the, um, the date and time would be correct, okay? Now, so we're in emergency passage mode now. So all of my doors are unlocked. Then we can go return to normal, which will put everything back into a normal state. Once we get the status back from the locks, the emergency passage icon bar will go away. And now we're back to normal state, okay? So if I look at my emergency users from here, you see I'm the only one besides the master and the manager that can issue those commands from the keypad, okay? Now, how do we add a remote? How do we pair a remote to a lock? Well, it's pretty easy. You don't have to buy the wireless remote kit uh, like I showed you yesterday. Um, you know, yesterday I showed you the wireless remote release kit, wherever it is. There it is. You know, that you have to add to it. You don't have to do that because we're using the radio. We're using the same radio for our... Um, um, our remotes. So all I have to do, and I don't have a uh, picture of it, and I don't have my camera set up, but uh, you just put the lock into program mode by entering the master code and then hitting AL, you know, just like you normally would any T3 lock. And then the function number is 65. Okay. It'd be AL 65, AL, the number one for the first remote and then star. And then you hold the button on the remote until the red light on the remote starts flashing green. It takes about 10 seconds. Now I can have up to 10 re uh, remote transmitters paired to a network's lock, not 50. I can do 10, okay? Then I take the lock out of program mode, and now my remote will be momentary release. When I push the button, door opens okay now i'm going to open up the gateway config here i'm going to you see that we are not in emergency lockdown i hold down my number three and four on the remote just went into lockdown okay i'm going to make sure my gateway is not communicating with anything click on the gateway config well Oh, I know, uh, I know what it was. Sorry about that. Um, when you use the USB gateway initially, okay, it changes a couple of features under the emergency tab. See how under activate global emergency, the box for keypad and key fob are unchecked, only activate local. When you use the USB gateway because it doesn't communicate with anything else, you don't have emergency commands, okay? So I need to resend just the features. 
gateways communicating. And then I send the command again to lock down. All right. Well, that just worked like a charm. Okay. Well, let's see. Send the command. Now we're in lockdown. All right. Well, that just didn't work the way I wanted it to. All right. So let's return to normal here. All right. Now we're out of lockdown. You know, things never work live the way you want them to. Isn't that always the case? All right, hold down and make sure here that our features, all right, they're all set. I'll check the box for enable, the sounder. We're gonna resend those features. Okay, we're complete. Now hold down the number three and four. Yeah, now it's communicating. Okay. You hear the, I don't know if you can hear it, but the lock is beeping now. It's beeping for the first 30 seconds. We open up the gateway config. There we go. Okay. So when you, it will not show on the software if you do a lockdown from the keypad, uh, from the remote, or from um, the gateway, it won't pop up immediately because we don't, we don't have real time reporting. But if I need to see this, then I have to go to the gateway config and I have to pull that information from the gateway. Okay. And now if I, uh, one and two, take it out of lockdown. Okay. There we go. So the gateway is communicating. And it has stopped communicating. So you can see that it shows we're still in lockdown. But if I close out the gateway config and open it back up, now it's back to normal. Okay. So just to show that we do not do real time reporting. Okay. We have to send the information out to the gateways and the locks, and we have to pull that information back into the software. Okay. All right, so there's, I showed you how, uh, real quick, and we're running over, but I showed you how to program one lock at a time, okay? I'm going to switch over to a different account that has multiple locks here. If I need to program a whole bunch of locks, it's kind of a pain to have to do them one at a time. Go up, storefront door, click on the storefront door, click on communication, and then do all that. I can go under wireless. You know, uh, Monday I showed you the data transfer module. The configuration for it, it would show all the locks here with the different functions to upload. But we can do the same thing with our uh, uh, wireless here. Okay, so you can see the wireless configuration. It has all of my locks. I have them all checked. I have them all set to send profile. I can have multiple configurations here. Okay, so there's locks number seven and nine. Um, I'm going to say receive log from these two. And then I just hit start and it will communicate with each one of those. However, that configuration is set. Okay. So I've pulled the event log from the net panel and now it's coming from the conference room. So if I wanted to look at those logs, I have to go to the net panel and then look at the log. Okay. And then for the conference room, I have to look at the log. So you can see um, that's the date change for today. Okay. So I can do it wirelessly with different configurations. And then because I have the different configurations, I can go under wireless actions and I can set up a wireless schedule. Now this is a 24 hour schedule. It's not a week or I can't set it up to pull a log every Friday at midnight it's only within a 24 hour period. So if I wanted to uh, say send, do this schedule and 
I'm going to change it to 11. See if I, I'm quick enough to do it for 11.16 a.m. Okay. Now when 11.16 rolls around on my computer, it'll do that configuration. Okay. It's executing that schedule, that wireless schedule. So I can set this up. So if I'm going to lunch or, um, you know, I have a meeting and I want to program the locks or I want to pull the audit trails or whatever the case is, I can do that on a schedule, but I can only do it 24 hours uh, ahead. Okay. I can update the date and time on all the locks. I would recommend doing that. Um, if you don't program the locks very often, I would recommend uh, updating the date and time just to be sure that everything is correct. I can update the status of all of the locks. So it's going to go out and check the status of each lock. Um, and it will um, have that uh, in the uh, gateway config table. Okay. So a lot of things that we can do with the networks. Um, I like the being able to put locks into uh, passage, manually unlock the doors, um, things like that. Um, you know, the lockdown is, uh, is a good feature. Again, it locks down every lock in under 10 seconds, up to 2,000 per account. Okay. Anybody have any, uh, any questions about anything that we've done today? There, uh, there's a, Andy, there's a question in the chat that I don't know if maybe you've already covered it from Glenn. Um, you could, which, uh, the, you could can pre-configure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry guys. I wasn't on the whole time. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, you know, Travis yeah, has that's... been through this a few times, so he doesn't need to sit and listen to me drawing on all the time. <laughs> so, uh, does anybody have any other questions before we, uh, um, uh, actually uh draw uh, looks like some may have been a couple of people that left um but uh he's going to do a random draw for the uh, uh networks demo kit like i said just uh when you get it uh go ahead and set it up if you have any issues please email me uh, i'll be glad to uh get on the phone with you and help you figure it out um more than likely, when you first plug it in, you're going to have one thing pop up, and that's going to be um, uh, a firewall. So you allow that connection, um, you know. But other than that, it's just pretty much plug and go. Uh, not, not plug and play, but just plug and go. Uh, but uh, Travis, if you want to, I don't yep. know how you're going to randomly draw, but I've got the uh, the wheel of names. Oh, <laughs> there we been... go. This has been pretty fun for the for these webinars. So I just click and it'll pick one. Okay. So, and the winner is. <laughs> it looks uh, like it's. Oh. <laughs> Michael. It looks like it's All right. Michael. All right. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with Michael about okay. getting this lock out to him. Okay. Well, so. that's that's good. So. Um, Let's see. Is that Michael? Oh, thank you. You're welcome, Michael. Um, you know, hope that, uh, that it works out for you. Like I said, uh, give me a call, um, if you have any issues and, um, you know, we'll get you set up that way you can go out and you can show the, the, uh, the network system to your customers, your potential customers. Um, you know, I'll be glad to help you out as much as I can. We don't have a rep in, um, uh, um, in Texas right now. Uh, so, um, you know, I'll be glad to help you any way I can because I'm stuck at home for the next month or so, uh, because of this virus, but, um, I'm going to uh, turn it back over to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, we're going to, we have more webinars happening over the next, uh, few weeks. And I think, you know, this is going to be something that we'll continue to do. Maybe not at the same pace that we have been over the last month, but, we'll probably have one or two, you know, webinar online training sessions per week. So if you guys have any suggestions on training that you would like to see, um, I know Andy and I've been talking a little bit about some kind of more hands-on um, 
training that we could do in the future with alarm lock. Um, you know, even the idea of maybe everybody buying into a demo unit and being able to kind of go through um, doing some actual hands-on training in the future. But my, my email is travis.howell at hlflake.com. You can email me suggestions of, of training you'd like to see. And if anybody is in Texas, I know Emilio is, um, just send me an email um, about uh, CEU credits for, for any of the training that we're doing. Uh, and I'll be able to get back to you with a, a, a certificate. So, and that's one, Texas one more, and Alabama. Sorry. One more question here that popped up. Any thoughts on the iLock app from NAPCO? Uh, I was trying to avoid that. Um, not really. Um, the an iLock app is uh, basically just an app uh, for your phone. Um, and it'll work with the uh, some of the Architect series locks. Um, you have to uh, buy the lock that has the uh, Bluetooth antenna. But um, with the software, uh, you can actually, uh, hopefully soon, you can send and uh, maintain the uh, phones in the software so you can schedule them, you can uh, remove them, you can do all of that. But, um, you know, it, it's this, this virus has kind of put us into a, into a, a bucket, I guess. And we, we, our engineers are working from home. So they're working hard to get everything finished up, but we're still kind of lacking a little bit on those. But I mean, it, it's a good little app. Um, it, it works, you know, for like a, um, um, multi-tenant, uh, apartment complex and things like that. So, you know, they can use their phones versus, uh, having to have a hard card. Um, but, um, I mean, it's still kind of in its, uh, infancy phases. So we're still working with it, but it, it, when it gets finished, it'll be a good app. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, if, uh, if there are no other questions, I guess we're going to close it out. And you can keep checking the hlflake.com events page. Uh, that's where we're posting all of the upcoming uh, training. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks, Travis, for hosting this. Yeah. Thank you, Andy, for your time. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right.